In this lesson, we will learn how to use AI, pathfinding, and setting up events. I've opened up the AI and events map from the tutorial project. Let's run our game first to see what we're going to do in this tutorial. As you can see, we start out with the first person character controller. This time, however, we have a weapon loaded in front of us. We can shoot our weapon by pressing the left mouse button. When our weapon is empty, we can press R to reload. We also have a flashlight, that we, which we can toggle by pressing F. I've walked into this wide hall, and I'm going to press the E key on my keyboard to, act, to interact with this control panel. Now that I've killed these monsters, let's go down the elevator. Okay, that's far enough. Let's get started on seeing how this all works inside the editor. The first control panel up here controls the elevator that goes upwards when, once we have pressed the button. So let's select it and we can see that the push button script is attached. That means that as soon as we are near with the player the interaction icon appears which is the little white hand. And once we press the E button the switch sound will be played. If the control panel is not enabled or the push button script checkbox is not enabled, then the interaction is not possible. Let's see what happens inside the flow graph editor once we press the button to interact with this control panel. As you can see, there's quite a lot of activity going on inside this scene. We have three control panels for the elevator. However, the first one that we've just selected is highlighted in red. The first thing that we're going to look at is the trigger delay, which is added to the music delay. As soon as we press the button on the first control panel, it will activate the trigger delay. Let's see where the trigger delay is. If we select it inside the flow graph editor, we can see that this pivot right here is also being highlighted in red. If we go to the script, we can see that the delay has 2500 milliseconds, or roughly two and a half seconds. So that means that this trigger starts two and a half seconds later. And once that trigger is done, then the music player is being played. And this plays the noise music. This pivot, which is also quite next to the control panel, it has the noise script attached to it. It simply plays a music file. You can set up the range, the volume, the pitch, and whether it should loop or not. You can also see that once it's being done playing, it also disables this noise. The next thing that it does, it opens the sliding door. So where is this sliding door? As you can see in the editor, it now has the gizmo placed over there. So let's go towards it. This sliding door, if we select it, we can see that it's enabled, but it's closed. As soon as we press the button, this door will slide open, like this. Then we have the second sliding door script. The elevator also used this sliding door script, because the only thing an elevator does differently than a door is actually move upwards instead of going sideways. So once the control panel has been pushed or used, you can see that it's going to open or that the elevator goes upwards. 
The same thing goes for the other control panels. The control panel down here is the middle one, and the only thing that one should do is toggle whether it goes up or down. So if the elevator is already up, it goes down, and when it's already down, it goes up. The control, the other control panel, the last one, let me find it first, there we go. This one only takes care of that the elevator goes down and not up, so we should always close the elevator. Now let's get back to the AI. If we select one of these monsters, we can see that the monster AI script has been attached. We can see its health, whether it's being enabled and whether it has a target. When a monster is in the range of the player, it will automatically start attacking the player. But right now it doesn't have a target and it's also not enabled. If we go to the flow graph editor, we can see that if we push the first control panel, the one on the rail platform, then we can see it enables the monster AI. It does that for both the monsters. What's also important is to note the AI nav point's target. So this monster right here goes to AI nav point 1. And if we click on this button here, we go say go to object. And once we do that, we see that the first enemy goes towards this point. So it actually doesn't go to the first person player, which stands up here. It just moves to this point. However, since the player is still in this area, it will spot the player and then start moving towards the player. The same thing goes for all the monsters down here. However, these do not have an event set up for a target. They just act on whether the player is visible, or whether it can hear the player. Now let's have a look on how the weapon is being set up. We click on the character controller, or we list it and find it inside the scene. We go to the script tab. We are already aware of the fact that it has the FPS player script attached to it. We can set a few extra options. First off, we can say whether the flash light should be on or off. We can then attach a weapon. The auto pistol is a prefab that you can load from the assets. We can also say what is the team position of our player. When it's a good guy and we have the enemies, which are the bad guys, then they, are, then they will attack us. However, if we set it to bad, the AI will not attack us. If we set it to neutral, the AI will not attack us either. Another strong feature of the Letworks engine is the built-in navigation mesh generation. The pathfinding in a scene like this is being automatically constructed with the push of a button. When you want to do so, go to Tools and click on Build Nav Mesh. In this options menu, you can specify two options. The important one here is the max edge length. The lower this number, the more detail will go into your nav mesh, but the longer it takes to build it. When you're done building, the nav mesh will automatically be shown. The blue areas represent the areas where an enemy can walk. If you go to View and click on Show Navigation, you can toggle it on or off. If we have a look at the door where the monsters are, you can see that the nav mesh goes straight through it. If we select the door and we go to physics, then we see this option here, nav obstacle, which stands for nav mesh obstacle. If we would check this, then the nav mesh would see this as an actual obstacle and not generate any navigation meshes inside this mesh. If we would run the scene now, the monsters would not be able to find us since they cannot find the path.
And that concludes this lesson of the Letworks engine.